All right, so guys, in this video, we're gonna be covering load placement. Now, I understand what you're saying. That's not really one of the topics that, uh, you know, needs to be changed, this and that. I never really covered this topic all that well. Like, I've covered it a little bit. I did a video on why you need a dually. Um, I'm gonna be using some of my old footage on this one just to kind of give you guys an example. And I'm just going through and answering all the questions that you guys have had that I've never really had time to answer in a video. And on top of that, I wanna be doing a better job of getting this stuff in. So, if you guys look, an F-250, it has a, I forget, the GVWR was like 10,000 pounds, and then this trailer had a GVWR 13.7, something like that. So the gross combination weight rating was 23.7. Now, I get a lot of guys saying, oh, well, my trailer weighs 8,000 pounds, and it's only rated for this, so I can only put 5,000 pounds on it. And that is complete false. That is not how that works. So what we're going to do to get your capacity, and you guys are going to have to follow along, this is a long, drawn-out thing, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to take the truck and trailer and you're going to weigh it. You're going to throw all your tools in it. You're going to fill it up with fuel. You're going to put your spare tires in it. You know, all the stuff that you're going to take with you on the road, go weigh your truck and trailer. Now, look at the little sticker on the side of your door. It's going to tell you your GVWR. Specifically, this truck has a 10,000 pound GVWR. Now we go back and we look at the trailer. The trailer has a 5K GVWR. Now, what does that mean? Your combination weight rating is 23,700 pounds. Now, what does that mean? Oh, the trailer weighs 8,000 pounds. You know, you can only scale 5,000 pounds. Not how it works. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the weight, the actual weight of your combination vehicle with all your tools, all your stuff in it, anything you're gonna bring with you, weigh that shit. Subtract it from your GCWR, your gross combination weight rating. So in my case, it's 23.7, okay? My truck and trailer together, I'm just gonna use a number. I'm gonna say it weighs 15.7 thousand pounds, okay? 15.7. What that means is 23.7 minus 15.7, that gives me 8,000 pounds. That's how much weight I'm under my gross combination weight rating. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that number that you got and that is your capacity. That is how much you can physically put on your truck and trailer. Now it gets even more complicated than that. You're gonna take that 8,000 pounds that you're allowed to have or whatever your number is, you're gonna take X and you're going to put a load on it and now you're gonna have to watch each individual axle rating. So if you have a 13.7K trailer, I'm just gonna assume that the trailer has two 7K axles. So the trailer axles cannot be over 14,000 or 13.7 in your case. And then the truck and the trailer, you're going to have to look at both your axle ratings. Now, it's not going to matter so much. You're going to want to look at the tire ratings. As long as you are physically under the tire ratings on each individual axle, so you have your front axle, which is your steer axle, you have your drive axle, and then you have two trailer axles. Those two trailer axles work in conjunction, so they're together. You have to add both those numbers up. It's, like a, it's no different than a dually. That's just how they do it. They don't individually weigh each axle. They just individually weigh your front axle, your drives as a pair if you're in a semi, and then your trailer axles as a pair if you're in a tandem or even a triple. So that's what they're gonna do is they're gonna weigh all that together. Now, you need to make sure that you are under each individual axle rating. So if your front axle is only rated for 5,000 pounds, that scale ticket cannot say 5,100 pounds or 5,020 pounds. It has to be under 5,000. Rear axle, 6,800 pounds has to be under that weight. Doesn't matter that the combination is going, or the, the tire ratings are always going to exceed what your vehicle actually is. So if my combination weight rating is 23.7, my axles all together are probably rated at 26,000, you know, just throwing out a random number. They're always going to be higher than the combination weight rating itself. They're never going to be less because if they're less, that's not good and you can't, you're not going to be able to load your trailer right. So, with that being said, keep each individual axle under its weight rating and keep your capacity, keep your combination under that legal limit. So, 23.7, okay, I just weighed in, I'm 23,000 pounds now, I have, I don't know, uh, 10,000 pounds on the axle, I'm still underweight, I have, I'm just going to be throwing out numbers here, I have... 5,000 pounds or 6,000 pounds on the rear axle and 4,000 pounds on the front axle. Cool. I'm underweight on every one of them. Good to go. And I'm under my combination weight rating. 
Now, there are rumors going around. I have seen certain DOT officers. Well, I haven't seen it personally, but I've heard about DOT officers out west. They're telling people that you have to... Uh, they, if, if you really get smart with DOT officers, the shit that they pull is kind of crazy. I understand that not all of them are bad, but at the same time, like, take it with a grain of salt. So I've seen and heard guys saying, oh, well, we'll unhook your trailer and weigh that, which is complete crap. And the reason that that uh, is not legitimate is because any weight that you put on the trailer, any weight that is in front of the rear axle is going to transfer itself over to the truck. So you can't separate it and then say, oh, because your combination vehicle, you can't separate the combination and be like, oh, that's how it works. It's not because now all the weights on the front trailer jacks and the rear tires. Well, when the truck is connected to the trailer by the gooseneck or any ball or whatever you're hooking it to, those jacks are up. So a lot of the weight is on the truck and, and the other weight is on the trailer. So that's how that works and that's why that is complete crap. You can't just take the weight of one and subtract it from its GVWR and that's that's not how that works. You are, a, you are now a combination vehicle. So you need to act as such. So when you're going through the scales, keep that stuff in mind. Also, I highly recommend you guys reading up on fmcsa.dot.gov. And the reason I'm saying that is because a lot of times things that you think you're going to get picked on for, make sure you have certain rules and up like that. Case in point, I'm going to give you an example. DOT inspections are not required on commercial vehicles in states that have a a state inspection. So the state of Pennsylvania, we are not required to have a DOT inspection on our trucks because the state inspection supersedes it. Now, a DOT officer could probably give us a hard time for it, but that's at the end of the day, that's not our problem. We are well within our legal limits, and at the end of the day, if you have to get a lawyer to fight it, you got to fight it, but you're always going to win that case. I get guys saying, oh, well, you should just do it just because. No, I shouldn't. DOT officers should do their jobs and not give out tickets for things that, in a perfect world, DOT officers would not give out tickets for things that are not illegal. That's going to be the end of this video, uh, it's a shorter video, but it kind of gets short, sweet to the point. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if I missed anything. Go down in the description, check out uh, Rumble. I started an account over there, and I also have Mudflap. Go check out, link in the description. Check it out. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Have a good one.